Hi, I'm Jimmy with Pinlights, and today we're going to show you how to install Pinlights Classic Editions in your game. Let's go. All right, when you unbox your Pinlights, you're going to have a couple things, and we'll break them down here uh, one by one. So first and foremost, you're going to have the light bars, uh, hermetically sealed, with a little instruction card inside. Uh, you can just set those down for now. You're going to have the Pinlights controller board. You're going to have a 12 volt adapter complete with American power plug, US power plug. If you don't have a, uh, a US uh, power plug in your service port area in your machine, uh, we do also sell an IEC uh, connector adapter if you've got one of those. If you don't have any service port available, you can also uh, plug this in outside the machine and the mod will still turn on and off with the game thanks to the GI connector. Inside of the bag of goodies, you're gonna find a couple things. You're gonna find some hardware uh, along with the uh, mounting brackets for the wire harnesses as well as an alcohol cleaning wipe. We'll need these here in just a second. You're gonna have the left and right wire harnesses to connect the light bars to power. These will connect between the light bars and the control board right here. So we'll set those down. Gonna find the protector plastics for the control board. These will be mounted on the top and the bottom of the control board with the hardware that is in this bag. We'll set those down. You'll find two pairs of the alligator clip connectors that connect to our sensor cables. You'll find the longer connectors which connect between the alligator clip connection here and our control board. So the two pin Molex will connect to the control board right here. So we'll take both, both of those out. And then you'll find another pair of alligator uh, clip connectors that are used for GI. In addition to that, you're gonna have wire ties for cleaning up your wires, dressing your wires. You also have a couple of these uh, wire taps here, uh, which can be useful if you need to kind of get into a Molex connector on the game. They've got these steel ends right there that you can use to connect to your alligator clips and then uh, kind of get in there. Uh, those are completely optional, but we do throw those in just in case you need them. And yeah, we've got our wire ties. So that's everything that's in the box. If you ordered our special low profile metal mount kit, uh, you'll have two of these brackets inside of your package as well. Uh, you can remove the protective film from the top so that there's no scratches or anything like that. There's also an optional piece of double-sided tape under here, nice 3M tape. Uh, you can decide to remove the paper liner if you want to permanently affix these to your game. Otherwise, leave that paper liner on if you want to be able to take these on and off. With that said, let's go ahead and assemble our control board plastics. So let's go ahead and take these out. You're going to need the four brass hex standoffs that we include. You'll need the eight machine screws that we include, and those are going to go on your uh, control board. So first thing we're going to do is we'll take this right here. Uh, you can go ahead and remove the uh, paper. Uh, so that you can kind of see, uh, you know, see the control board. And these do only go on one way, so all the holes line up there on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and just feed your four bolts through, just like that. And then on the other side, we'll go ahead and feed Tighten up our brass standoffs. So you're left with that. You've got all your standoffs held in by the bolts underneath. And then you'll take your top piece. And again, only goes on one way. You know, if you try to put it too far over, you're going to cover up these, these connectors. So just flip it around. And again, take the paper off if you want. You know, that's uh, ASMR for some people. And there, you'll finish it out with your machine screws, just like this. So four on the top. And then 
you've got your control board protected on both sides. Again, feel free to remove the paper if you want. All right, uh, so that's uh, the inventory and prep. Let's go ahead and go to the game and get these installed. All right, today we're gonna be installing pin lights on a Stern Ghostbusters Premium. Don't worry if you're installing in a WPC Bally game or really any other game, the installation process is gonna be really similar. So the first thing we wanna do is open up the back box and locate the service port. The service port's right here, and on Stern machines, typically they're gonna have a US power adapter. And what we wanna do is we wanna take the power plug end so we want to plug it in there. By the way, make sure your game is powered off and unplugged if you don't want the service port to be live. So we recommend unplugging it. And then we'll plug it in here. And then what we want to do is we want to drop it down through one of our wire channels. And we're pretty much done in the back box. So we'll go ahead and just kind of zip that back up. And All right, the next thing we want to do is some cabinet prep. So we're gonna take the included alcohol wipes. We've included two, so we'll take the first one. And what we wanna do is we wanna wipe off behind the back panel right here, okay? And if we wipe off behind the back panel, that's gonna allow our wire connectors to stick. And these are the little adhesive wire rings that we give you. Those are gonna support the other end of our pin lights wire harness, even if we take the pin lights off of the game itself. It'll allow the uh, cables to be suspended there so you can easily Pull them back up around the backboard. So we'll go ahead and just we'll take the uh, alcohol wipe and we'll, we'll wipe off a spot here. And generally I like to leave a couple inches between the top of the backboard and where I'm putting these. It's going to be slightly different on every game just due to whatever they mount to the backboard. So we've cleaned, uh, cleaned off a spot. Let's go get our wire rings and uh, adhere them to the uh, back of the play field. All right, we have our two wire rings. What we're gonna do is remove the adhesive from the side, just like this. And we're going to take one end and we want to adhere them to the backboard flat like this, okay? Because that will allow the wire to come up through the ring. And these are ratcheting, so you can adjust the tightness and uh, however much slop you want. So we'll go ahead and just adhere that to each corner. There you go. We just cleaned these, so it'll be nice and sticky. And then we'll take the other wire ring and put it on this side, just like that. So moving on. All right, with our play field down, we're gonna take our 12 volt adapter and we'll go ahead and expand the, uh, like unhook the wire, uh, the wire retention here just like that, and we'll stretch this out. And using the cable that we just dropped right here, we'll plug it into the other end of the power uh, brick. Make sure to push it all the way in. A lot of times these things tend to kind of hang halfway out. They don't snap in all the way. So make sure it's good and snug on this side. And then really, you can just drop it down into the cabinet, let it rest there. It's not gonna hurt anything. And then uh, this is going to be what we plug into our pin lights control board. So we have our pin lights control board. We've put our plastic protector on it. If you haven't done that, please do that. Prevents uh, shorts and other things like that. Protects the board and your game. Uh, and then we will plug this into the barrel connector, just like that. And then we'll set that down in the cabinet. We'll need it in a little bit later. All right, so looking at the back of the play field here, this is the backboard on the Ghostbusters. We actually see a GI strand right here, and then we see a flasher right here. This is what we're gonna use in order to ensure interactivity with the game. So what we wanna take is one of our ends with the alligator clips on it, and it has this other JST end on it, and we're gonna connect it, okay, like so. We wanna connect the cable. Cable ends together, okay? So if we just push those through like that, okay? They're nice and connected. And we're gonna take the alligator clip in right here. Polarity does not matter, okay? The board will automatically rectify that stuff for you, literally. So we're gonna clip onto our flasher, just like that, okay? And make sure that we're not shorting anything out and all that, and if you can't really get to it, I mean, you can always Clip these off and solder the wires on, or uh, you can use wire taps if you're trying to get into a Molex connector or something like that. Uh, we will have connectors later on 
um, that are manufacturer specific to kind of make this stuff a little bit easier. So, all right, we got our cable here. And what I want to do is I want to take the Molex end. Okay, that's this little white end right here. We're going to take our board that we drop down into the cabinet. All right, and we want to put that into our FL connection. FL stands for flasher. Okay, and all these are ramped and all that. So ramp to ramp, plug it in just like that. Now what we want to do is we want to take a GI. Okay, again, same pair of uh, alligator clips. We're going to take our other long end of the cable. All right, and what we want to do is we just want to plug them in together. All right, we'll plug them in just like that. See that right there? And then we're going to take the alligator clip end and we're going to connect it to the GI string. Again, polarity doesn't matter. I like the backboards uh, for the GI connections because they use these long braids. They're easy to attach to, and they're also easily accessible if you ever need to pull the play field out, do a little bit of service or something like that. And we've got our wire rings right here where we can put our uh, wire connectors. All right, so we just connected up the GI. We're gonna take again, white Molex end. We're gonna pick up our board like this, and we're gonna plug it into GI. I'm gonna plug it into that GI connection right there. Make sure we're not over by one pin. And there we go, we got both of them connected. Got power, all that good stuff. All right, so I'm gonna throw those down in there. Don't really need them just yet. And uh, make sure we're not tangled with anything. We'll dress those up later. All right, next thing we wanna do is we wanna take our big uh, cable connectors with the five pin Molex on them. All right, we wanna take these and we want to take the twist ties off. And both the left and the right bars are the same, so you don't really need to pay attention on the classic editions, what side you connect them to. So we're gonna expand the wire harness like that. And the black JST connector end that looks like that, we're just gonna clip that right into the ring, the wire ring that we installed back here earlier, okay? All right, and that's just gonna rest right there. Now we're gonna take the other end of that, which is the five position Molex right there. We're gonna take our board. And this is technically the right side, so we'll go ahead and plug it in to the right side connector, just like that. And on our left side, we've got the Molex end, which we will connect to our flasher controller board or our uh, pin lights controller board. There it is. Got that. And then again, on this left side, we're just gonna put that inside of our wire ring, ratchet it up like that. Let it rest right there. When you pull your light bars off and disconnect them with the back, it's gonna rest just like that. So all you gotta do is reach up, grab that cable. It's nice. All right, with our play field uh, sort of in uh, service position, we wanna do a couple things. So first we wanna grab our light bars, take them out of the packaging. And uh, what we wanna do is we wanna test our work. So we wanna make sure that our power and flasher and GI connections are all working appropriately. So we'll just uh, rest our light bars on the play field. Game is still unplugged. We're gonna take that wire that we set on the ring earlier. Look how easy this is. We're just gonna connect that connector right there. Same with the other side. And really what we wanna ensure is when we power the game up and the game boots, the GI comes on. And then uh, we'll also test the flasher. So seems like a pretty, uh, pretty easy way to do it. So we got the light bars resting on the play field. Let's go ahead and turn the game on. All right, there it is. So we've got our GI, we've got everything working just fine. See that? Um, let's go into diagnostics real quick. If we go into diagnostics, we should be able to test our flasher. We hooked it up on the, um, the ghost trap flasher that is in the back of the play field. So let's go ahead and uh, check that out. So we'll go into diagnostic, go into lamps, flashers, and 
there you go we're getting we're getting flashing stuff's flashing so cool we're good there um we can go into our gi gi test let's see if looks like our gi fades also work as well so gi is good we're intercepting stuff and these are default settings um, so we don't do like a red green blue kind of stroby flashy thing um, this is actually because at shows where power is often applied and, and, you know, people may power cycle games rapidly, we don't want the lights to go into a reset mode and kind of look like trash. We, we want things to look as close to factory as possible, but also our boards don't reset based on power cycles. There is actually a dedicated nuke button that allows you to uh, factory reset the board if you hold that down for five seconds. So there's no risk of accidentally doing that in like a location situation or if you're at a show. So, all right, we've got all that stuff connected. Let's go ahead and get the play field down and uh, adhere these things to the sides. All right, our play field is down. Uh, so the most important part about getting the adhesion right on these uh, particular uh, pin lights uh, is actually surface preparation. So that's why we include the alcohol wipes. However, if you've got some paper towels and some isopropyl alcohol, you can wipe these down kind of a lot more densely. Just make sure you let the alcohol completely dry or dry it off yourself with a paper towel. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll just take our alcohol wipe here and we want to wipe oh, about an inch area just below the glass channel. So just a little something like that. And you're going to go about to the top of the apron. That's about how far down our pin lights will go. All right, one thing to look out for um, on your pin lights is uh, so by default, we include the magnetic uh, mounting strips and these are one thirty seconds of an inch thick. So they're really, really thin uh, and they're also really, really strong. Um, but one of the things that you need to make sure you get right, and we'll usually do this for you, is to make sure the poles are right. Because if you flip this magnetic strip around and those poles are off, you'll actually notice that your magnetic strip tries to kind of fight toward the side. This is actually the edge. This is where the magnetic strip is. And they'll never line up right. So what you want to do, double check, double check our work, okay? Um, we'll try to get it right most of the time. And just make sure that that magnet strip is directly on top of the magnet that's on the light bar, okay? And that will ensure a good bond. All right. So with our magnet strips, what we want to do is we want to peel the adhesive backing off. That's the white strip. We're keeping the magnet strip on the light bar. And we take the adhesive protector off. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically put our thumb inside the glass channel and because we can't go any higher than the glass channel. And you also don't want your stuff too far down from the glass channel because it kind of looks a little jank. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the wires aren't pressed against the top glass channel here. We want to make sure the wires are below the glass channel so there's not a lot of tension on the uh, pin lights. And then with my thumb in the side glass channel, I'm just guiding the light bar such that the top of the light bar is just below the glass channel. Okay. And really just kind of get it started. Kind of look a couple inches down from where you're applying if you're applying from the top. And just make sure that you're kind of in a straight line. You know, you want that stuff to be parallel to where the glass channel is. Because you want it to look factory. You don't want a bunch of uh, dead space there. And all I'm doing is just going down the length of this and pressing it into the side of the cabinet with one hand, but also guiding it with, my, with the thumb of my other hand to make sure that it is the proper height. And then after you get a couple of good presses in, you can take the light bar off. The magnet mount should stay on the cabinet, just like this. And then you can really press it in with your hands. And then at that point, you'll get a nice snap. Boom. That stuff's locked on. You're not going to get a better, uh, better lock than that. Now, for those with art blades or those that don't want any adhesive stuff, uh, we do sell a uh, low profile metal mount. And so you'll bypass the magnet strip step. You'll still get magnet strips with your, uh, with your pin lights. But uh, what you'll do is you'll slide those underneath the glass channel and you'll just go all the way down the length of the game, guiding that 
metal uh, mounting rail into the glass channel, optionally remove the adhesive strip, and then uh, you can adhere the uh, light onto that. And once again, repeat for the other side. Again, just like the last time on the other side, you're gonna just listen for that snap. Boom, snaps into place. That's not going anywhere. So, and then uh, feed your wires back around and, and kind of tighten those up if you want. But that's the installation process. And uh, now let's uh, turn the game back on and see how it looks. Absolutely gorgeous. Perfect, a lot of light being thrown there, nice and diffused. These are factory settings, we haven't even dialed them in yet. Okay, so we've got the pin lights up on our game. On the left side and on the right side, we have the pin lights app available for both Android and iOS. It's our custom design app. And uh, so what we wanna do is we want to set the game up in our pin lights app here. So we'll just go ahead and hit add a game or the plus in the upper right hand corner. And this is just going to search. And I've got a bunch of uh, pen lights here, obviously, but the one that we're going to see is the pen lights with the MAC address, that EC62 ending in uh, B8. So we'll go ahead and tap that one. All right, it's then going to ask us what our Wi Fi pass, uh, our Wi Fi SSID is. And we're going to go ahead and select our 86 pixels one. We'll go ahead and authenticate. Enter the password for our Wi-Fi. All right, and then it's gonna prompt us for our game name. So this is Ghost, and we're gonna choose Ghostbusters Premium right here. And that's going to sync our devices. And there it goes. We all of a sudden, we see our Ghostbusters Premium. It is showing us powered on. Go ahead and hit the power button, turns off, and then turn it back on. Going into the device details, we've got a couple of different things. We've got power. Um, we've also got a setting here called Duck GI during flashers. Let me demo that for you right now. So if we go into our diagnostics and just activate our flasher. All right, so you see our flashers are going and they're a little bit exaggerated. And if we turn that off, you'll notice that the GI stays on. So turning this setting on means that the GI is going to duck down when the flashers go. So there you go. It just kind of pronounces the effect a little bit more. All right, getting out of that. Uh, tournament mode. If you want a nice distraction-free playing environment, tournament mode is great for that. Uh, so if we start the flashers again, but then we activate tournament mode, you see that all that distraction goes away. The GI stays at a fixed level, the flashers don't go, and it is a nice, well-lit, but distraction-free playing environment. All right, moving along, our GI Cool White Mix. If we look at uh, that, that's going to adjust the Cool White strand inside of each light bar, so the intensity. So if you want that, you'll get uh, a nice Cool White. You've also got a Warm White Mix. If you want something that's a little bit more, uh, a little more yellow, it's better on classic games. Generally on the newer Stearns, I bump that down a little bit but then keep cool white somewhere between, you know, 30 and 50%. I mean, at 100%, I mean, that's, that's really bright. It's blowing things out. So, you know, don't be obnoxious with it unless you want to. Um, GI Flasher Mix, um, that allows you to get some uh, kind of purples and blues into the color palette. It, it tends to help uh, bring some of the artwork out. Um, so generally I'll leave it around, you know, kind of, I don't know, kind of a third of the way up. Gives it a nice, uh, got a nice purple tint on the play field, but you've also got really a predominantly uh, cool white light. GI minimum brightness. Uh, this is a setting that if you have a lot of modes in the game where the lights flicker on and off, the GI could be really blinding. Foo Fighters is really bad about this. If you set a GI minimum brightness, that controls how low the lights dip when the GI goes off. And the minimum brightness is uh, required for this next setting. So you see turn GI off after seconds. If you're using a minimum brightness and you shut the game off, well, the GI technically is shut off. If your uh, pin lights are connected to the service outlet and the service outlet is still hot, 
that would keep your pin lights on forever. And that doesn't really work all that well. So turn GI off after seconds means basically if you've got a minimum brightness set, but then the GI goes off longer than this particular interval, shut the GI off. So in other words, it'll make your game look like it's off um, and not stay on. So it's a, it's a way for us to offer a minimum brightness setting, but also respect when you power off your game. All right, GI smoothing. So GI smoothing is, uh, is, is a setting that is exclusive to our hardware. Um, GI smoothing is basically how often it's sampling the GI waveform. So on normal uh, kind of modern sterns, you'll want to keep this around two, you know, maybe, you know, somewhere between two and, and four. And that basically means that it's sampling the GI every two milliseconds. It's sampling the GI very quickly. So it's going to really snap to a lot of those GI fades. So if we uh, just do that, you'll see that it's responding to the GI very well. If I bump this GI smoothing up all the way, you'll see that it's kind of leveled out. The, the light bars aren't really responding to the GI at all. And you may ask yourself, why would we want this setting? Well, the reason why we want this setting is for WPC titles that have an AC line for the GI so that you don't get the ripple uh, of the waveform inside of your pin lights. Uh, you can actually bump the GI smoothing up for those WPC titles, and that'll actually smooth out that AC uh, line, and you'll get a, a steadier light. But for uh, GI that's clocked at a much higher rate, i.e. on modern games, you want to crank that down. So it allows you to follow the, the GI fades uh, exactly. And then uh, moving on, uh, you've got Pinlights Classic, which is the model. You've got the IP address on the LAN. You've got firmware updates, and uh, you can easily hit update firmware here. We're already at the latest version, but in the event that we fix things on our hardware, you can hit that update firmware button to get the latest and greatest. And that really concludes our uh, setup of the pin lights. Uh, really appreciate you walking through uh, the app with us and, and uh, definitely appreciate your order. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments or ideas uh, for videos or, or things you'd like to see, and uh, we'll hop to it.